RV life is amazing on so, so many levels. I love it and highly recommend. RVing in the rain can be magical if everything is working out well, but the reality of RVing in the rain not so much fun. But first, hey guys, I'm Anne, single mom and lifetime slow traveler. But four years ago, when I retired from the Navy, I was able to choose where I travel and how. And the first place I started was in an RV. And today we're gonna talk about what it's like to RV in the rain, especially in a small RV with a kid, because it's definitely not all sunshine and roses. One of the biggest benefits of RV life is the outdoor life. Being able to go anywhere, leave the RV, enjoy the world, and then not have to drive at all or very much to be back in the comfort of your home. Like the beauty of RV life is that you bring your home with you to visit new and wonderful places. When it rains, things get difficult because realities of getting stuck in the mud depending on where you want to travel limits where you go i often found myself honestly just hanging out at walmart parking lots because it's concrete so i won't get stuck in the mud and unless i'm in a flood zone of some sort like everything should ultimately turn out okay walmart has all the necessities the groceries the bathrooms that i need especially if it's multiple rainy days in a row i'm probably going to a walmart 100 percent. but also in a perfect scenario when it's a rainy day, you find a safe place to park, you make some coffee, hopefully you've got some yummy snacks, and you just chill and read a book. Or if you've got kids, maybe you play games, you do some type of art activity. Coloring rocks was a lot of fun. And often YouTube and Netflix is a big part of the entertainment. On rainy days, you're not gonna have solar. You're really just gonna have whatever is left on your batteries and of course, whatever your car can charge. So having batteries on hand, important especially if you or your kid wants to watch youtube or netflix super super important what what i know you, you kind of smell like a wet dog right now so I, i'm not letting you on the bed i know another negative part of rainy days is uh the dog wants to be on the bed with you but he just he smells like a wet dog because yeah he still has to go outside for walks i know it's rough times rough times being a dog. So that type of rainy day RV life is amazing. But if you're low on water, if you're low on gas, if you're low on propane, if nothing is charged in the RV, then you first have to do a lot of errands. And some of those errands are much more uncomfortable in the rain, specifically filling up my fresh water tank because my fresh water tank can only be filled via the back and my back door has to be open. Okay, so back of the RV, right here this is where i get my fresh water i'm gonna replace the hose soon but this i would attach one side to a hopefully reliable water source and the other side would go here and on occasion i will use some bleach tablets to help keep things a little bit clean such a weird idea isn't it that we're putting bleach in the water as you can see requiring the door to be open once again carpet on the door but also right next to my mattresses. Something I've definitely thought about doing is getting some kind of a plastic drape. A lot of people have mosquito nets that they put on the back of their RV so they can keep the door open but not let bugs in. I don't know if it's that big of a deal to me, but on a rainy day, having a curtain here so that the inside of my house doesn't get wet while I'm filling with water feels kind of important. That being said, Again, I'm probably hanging out at Walmart, which means I'm kind of limiting how much camping or water usage I'm doing in the RV. So not a huge deal, but things that cross my mind, like I can't get water right now because it's raining. Now getting gas, propane, etc., is just as easy or hard as it is with regular car life, so it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, the fresh water sucks. Now, one of the huge negatives of camping at a Walmart or a truck stop, etc., even though, again, worth it if it's during rainy season, is that I always have my windows covered. And so it does feel a lot more claustrophobic camping in the RV than when I'm actually camping or living in her. So definitely one of the huge negatives. Although sometimes because I do park in the back, maybe one side of the RV might have a pretty decent view, but yeah, generally, not so much. And especially early days of RV life, where my road trip was just honestly packed with a lot of things that turns out I didn't really need. Rain camping or camping at Walmarts was a very kind of claustrophobic moment 
but you live, you learn, and if you haven't already, you start to embrace kind of that minimalist lifestyle because that will really come in handy on the rainy days for sure. Now I've told several people the stories of Walmart parking, and I say Walmart, but I kind of just mean parking lot parking. So Walmart, Cabela's, truck stops, welcome centers. You know, parking in a place that's not necessarily very scenic. People have asked me why I would do it, especially multiple days in a row. Why would you stay in North Dakota at Walmart if it's constantly raining? And the truth is, while I do enjoy traveling in the RV and moving frequently, I also just enjoy staying still. So rainy days, rainy weeks were one of those conflicting moments where I would ponder, should I spend a day, which is really all it takes, to go do all the errands, right? To get fresh water, to empty out all my tanks, to make sure I've got propane if I want it, to go to Walmart or grocery store and get all the supplies I think I might need for the next few days, and then spend the next three days huddled in my RV, not going anywhere. Like the introvert in me, I'm actually kind of okay with doing those. It's just it's just a little bit annoying that the weather is telling me to have an introverted day as opposed to me deciding to have an introverted day. But at the end, I didn't necessarily mind spending a few days literally just cooped up in the RV if I had all the things I needed and if we were ultimately safe. Like I've lived on a carrier for months and months of my life. A few days in an RV, not gonna hurt me. And so while I might complain a little bit, really what I'm saying is that I chose to hang out at a Walmart or wherever for those few days, Vice doing option number two, which would be to get on the internet, figure out where good weather is located and then drive to that spot. Cause the absolute number one benefit of living in an RV, especially if you're not location dependent, especially if you haven't made promises to meet someone at a certain place, or maybe you're waiting for a package to be delivered, something like that. But if you don't have any obligations in that spot, RV life says you can just go. And so there were times where I would choose to Walmart hop or to stay in the exact same Walmart in the exact same parking spot for multiple days at a time. But there were other days where I said, no, we're gonna keep moving in a particular direction that I think will lead us towards better weather so that we can go out and do things. And while I love being selfish, it's not always about me and whether I feel okay with being an introvert, but it also has to do with Alex and even the dog. If it's been too long between Alex being able to go outside, explore and do new things, he would also get super restless. He's got a little ADHD. Actually, sometimes I think I do too. And so I know being cooped up indefinitely is not the best thing for Alex and also for the dog. Now for the dog, his situation is a little bit different than us. If we do too many national parks or state parks, I feel like the dog ends up being cooped up a little too much. It's not that he can't necessarily enjoy any part of national parks, or state parks, but to my knowledge, all the locations require him to be on a leash, which means he can't necessarily like run full speed in whatever direction he wants and kind of exercise his entire self. As you can imagine, in the RV, there's very limited space for anyone to run, even if you're a small dog, although Henry does give it his best shot. So, what I'm trying to say is a lot of thought does have to go into whether I decide to tough it out and stay in a location that's super rainy or whether we decide to move. And it's not always about whether I'm cool with it, but whether we have what we need. So again, the water, the gas, etc., And whether the other two people I share this RV with are also okay with staying still for a day or two. So yeah, in RV life, keeping an eye on the weather, super important. But when you have a house on wheels, you can usually just leave.